So I think we'll see such things as the improvement in the velocity of the mobilization of capital as being one big revolution that will be facilitated through, uh, through blockchain. My name is David Nunes. I'm the head of Six Digital Exchange, which is Six Group's Digital Assets Exchange, a fully regulated financial markets infrastructure built on blockchain technology. We see a lot of promise in blockchain technology, so much so that in 2018, Six Group got behind this initiative to develop this FMI on blockchain technology with the expectation that the future financial markets infrastructure will be built around tokenized assets and blockchain. The use cases that we think will stand to benefit the most are pretty broad. We think that uh, the fixed income uh, stands to benefit, and so far we've done a number of bond issuances on the platform. The areas of interest around uh, the automation of corporate actions, on the one hand, so the so improvement around efficiency and cost reduction, then there's also the fact that we can reduce reconciliation requirements as a result of atomic settlement. And in addition, the ability to immobilize these assets, which is something we're looking very seriously at now and anticipate having products around that in the future for instantaneous collateralization uh, of the asset is another area that we think is really, really interesting. But it doesn't just stop with fixed income. We're looking at equities, funds, and tokenized precious metals as well as additional asset classes we intend to provide on the platform. In 2018, uh, Six Group made the decision to initiate the project that ultimately led to SDX. Uh, in September of 2021, FINMA, the regulator in Switzerland, granted us a license to operate an exchange and CSD on the blockchain technology. And then we went live with the first bond issuance in October of that year, which was a dual part, dual tranche bond, um, part digital, part traditional on the infrastructure. How we're seeing the development and the deployment of this technology in the institutional space is very much uh, based around addressing the fundamental foundational components of the technology that actually need to be there for us to actually achieve adoption. Uh, so I don't think this is a, a sprint. Uh, we have to make sure that we are bringing the asset classes that we're deploying up to the same level of standard from a financial perspective as traditional assets. And that means a number of, uh, of pieces of technology of, uh, of integrations that we've had to do so that, for instance, uh, when you issue a bond on the platform that we're not only enabling those uh, investors whose custodians, brokers are already on the SDX platform, the blockchain platform, to actually be able to purchase that, that, uh, that particular bond, but also have a bridge into the traditional infrastructure. So you can issue a bond digitally, but also enable that to be traded and settled on the traditional infrastructure as well. So expanding the opportunities and making it that as an issuer, you can address the entire liquidity that exists within the ecosystem beyond simply the digital blockchain based technology. So that sort of that, that requirement for enabling migration to enable additional bond issuances, well, that actually led to the UBS bond being issued on the platform in uh, November of 2022, which is a 375 million uh, franc bond specifically because we could uh, we could dual list it. So it was, uh, it was available as a natively issued digital bond on SDX, but also traded and settled on the traditional infrastructure. In addition to that, um, looking at ways that we can uh, ensure that there is efficiencies or there are no deficiencies around aspects like the, the cash legs. So at the moment, uh, on the platform, when you settle um, a, uh, a securities transaction, we do that in tokenized Swiss francs, which is essentially our own stable coin. But because we are the intermediary that issues that, uh, those tokens, even though we hold the reserve and a one-to-one -one account at the Swiss National Bank, there is counterparty risk associated with the fact that it's SDX who has issued the token, which means there's a balance sheet uh, charge associated with holding those tokens, uh, which means essentially that doesn't scale. And there's no situation where a stable coin in the wholesale space is a uh, is a settlement asset that, that actually does scale in that context, unless it is uh, either a CBDC, a wholesale CBDC, or something equivalent to synthetic CBDC. So the pilot project that we've engaged with uh, the Swiss National Bank is exploring the use of uh, wholesale CBDCs is another direction of travel that we need to go along to ensure that we get ourselves as an infrastructure on par with the traditional infrastructure before we can even begin to talk about the additional benefits that come from, uh, from the digital assets. 
there are there are, th and there are numerous challenges and, uh, and considerations uh, that an organization has when adopting this technology. And I think that's really manifested in the process that we need to take our new members through as uh, when they're on board onto the platform. And that is uh, a relatively significant amount of work that we do with them uh, through workshops to ensure that their legal and risk and compliance functions and IT functions to understand the implications of the technology and how to accommodate the technology within their existing control environment. So that just simply digesting, understanding how to eliminate the risks or reduce the risks as much as possible is absolutely key to, uh, to part of the onboarding process. But also it feels that from the perspective of, uh, of, of for instance, the Swiss ecosystem, we're kind of bringing an upgrade to the entire marketplace because this is the first time that a lot of these organizations have had to tackle the concept of digital assets. And as a result of the work they do with us, they're able to actually um, benefit from that in other contexts as well as simply SDX. Interoperability is really important for us. Uh, what we need to be ensuring that we have is really optionality around the technology that we're uh, having to interact with when it comes to the sort of future of this particular space. I think it's unclear at this point in time exactly what the sort of technology stack's going to look like when it comes to regulated activities on blockchain technology. We expect in the future we'll need to interoperate with, uh, with public chains to facilitate a number of different use cases. So that interconnectedness and doing that in, and interconnecting and interoperating in, 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 a safe, in a safe fashion is going to be absolutely critical, I think, as the environment develops and grows and we provide new functionality and new services within the space. There's so many different ways that we think technology can be uh, can, can benefit the financial markets ecosystem. I think that the fundamental concept of this sort of state machine which enables composable uh, transactions, I think that is, is really, really powerful. Uh, so I think we'll see such things as the improvement in the velocity of the mobilization of capital as being one big revolution that will be facilitated through, uh, through blockchain. And specifically because we can immobilize instantaneously collateral represented by uh, instruments that are issued on the technology. And, those can, and that collateral can then be that fund, used for funding purposes in numerous other contexts. So the generation of, of new opportunity and also the reduction in risk, the elimination of requirements for reconciliation, uh, the, the improvements that, we can be made, that can be made around automation being driven by smart contract technology. I think there's really very, very significant numbers of areas that, we can, uh, that, that, that will be revolutionized by the technology as it gets adopted over time. Improvements around how cross-border payments will work, how settlement will work, and completely new and exciting innovations that, are, that we can't even conceive of today that will be enabled as a result of adoption of this. I think fundamentally that we are very dependent upon our partners in this marketplace and that I, I look at our, our member banks as being absolutely critical and we're very grateful to the support that they've given us when it comes to adoption and when it comes to exploring the technology and helping us define that technology, that's absolutely critical. So we're actually deploying um, functionality to address their needs. The need to actually define genuine use cases that are tangible, concrete, that provide benefit, whether it's generation of new revenue or it's a cost reduction, but something that's simply beyond just buzzwords, I think that's absolutely critical as we move through this particular point in the evolution and adoption of the technology. Uh, that it's a Marathon, not a sprint. Um, it sounds a bit tired, but it's absolutely the case. This is, especially in the institutional space, this takes a long time uh, to actually implement and to adopt. Uh, and we have we're a significant number of foundational pieces that need to be in place before we can actually achieve mass adoption. Uh, making our way through that building of those foundations is very much where we are now. And such things as the bridges between the traditional infrastructure and the blockchain infrastructure or uh, resolving the challenges around riskless settlement on the cash leg, these are critical, critical components required to actually enable adoption. The challenge around ensuring that these different ecosystems that are represented by applications built on top of blockchain technology, that interoperability is going to be absolutely critical. What we mustn't have is, and what simply cannot be allowed, is, is silos of 
liquidity uh, and lack of interoperability between those silos. This only really works if these distributed ledgers can actually talk to each other. And that's where I see Chainlink playing a really critical role, and that's, that's why we're so excited to be partnering with them. Thank you.